Hi. Wow. Hi, beautiful. How are you? I am well. You look gorgeous. Thank you. I, I had to do my makeup today for interviews, so I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> you look gorgeous. Before I start, everyone, this is Sky Townsend. She is the comedic, the amazingly funny comedic actress, as well as photographer. We can also add podcaster to that title. But before I get started, let me just tell you. So I'm a woman of a certain age. My daughter is your age, and then I have another one younger. Wow. Okay. My daughter introduced me to you years ago your Instagram and how hilarious you were. So I've been following you. So when they said, hey, do you want to interview Sky Townsend? Oh. And they started telling me about you. I said, oh, you don't have to. I know. About I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know. So you have to say, shout out both my daughters, Aaliyah and Amara. They love you. Aaliyah and Amara, shout out to you. Send me a message so I can message you back. <laughs> Absolutely. So my daughter, Aaliyah, that's the oldest one. That's your age. She was born the same year you were born. Wow. And um, yeah, and you look um, good, mom. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Look, and I had her when I was grown and I was married and all that. <laughs> People were like, Did you have her yet? <laughs> but um, still, I it's so funny because when I told her, see, certain people I get credit for, and you were one of them. She was like, Oh my god, I love her because she thinks you're you know, you're amazingly talented and funny. And of course, everyone else does because now you are on a black lady sketch show on HBO. Yeah, yeah, it's unreal. I I still see the billboards in the city, and I'm like, wait, <laughs> what's going on? Crazy. Wow. I think I, I and I think this was on your Instagram. I guess when you first got it from from my memory, weren't you like showing a um, a billboard or something? Weren't you looking at it or posting yes. it or something? Yeah, I, I went to go visit it with my dad and my agent, and we were just blown away. I mean, they're humongous all over the city, but it's just one of those moments where you're like, wow, I've been working so hard, and this is such a win, you know? So you have to just take it in. Yes, absolutely. And you have been grinding, and people don't realize, and you just, you mentioned your dad, so I'm going to definitely get to that legend a little, just in a little bit. But yeah. That I think that's something great to say because so many people think people are overnight successes or because their dad is famous or their mom does this type of job that you're it's easy for you. But I can truly say, even if and, and all of your followers and fans can say that you've been working at this thing for a while. So how yeah. does it feel to work for this thing and then now you're on HBO on billboards? <laughs> It's, it's a lot to process. Honestly, I've been actively auditioning for a decade. So it's been 10 wow. years of going on auditions and memorizing lines. And, you know, I don't think people realize it sometimes takes, I've auditioned at least 600 times, you know? Wow. So you really start to sit and process how long it takes to get there. And, and if you really love it, you continue doing the work. But HBO is one of the biggest networks in the world. I mean, I can't process any of it, honestly. Yeah. But you are so well-deserving. And you mentioned your dad, so I definitely, this is going to be about you, but we got to mention your dad as you did. The legendary filmmaker, Robert, Robert Townsend. So I, you, you know how old I am, so you know I know your dad, right? <laughs> and I remember Hollywood Shuffle, and of course, everyone remembers Five Heartbeats. And I got to tell you a story real quick. Yes. So when he decided to do the behind the scenes of the Five Heartbeats and the making of Five Heartbeats, that documentary... Yes. I remember when he was on something talking about it. And I, and I went to the movies to see that because, you know, it was limited then. I went to the movie. I was like, I got to see this because the talent that he has and the struggle yeah. that he had and, and trying to see, have people see his vision. And then it become this great classic cult classic, not even a cult classic. Everybody loves across the board. Everyone yeah. loves five heartbeats. And watching that, yeah. and everybody that I know, when it came to, I think, the All Black Network, I saw it again several times. And everybody mm -hmm. that I know, I'm like, you got to watch this. Um, and I'm like, even if you've never seen Five Heartbeats, you got to watch it. It's such it a work of art. Yeah, it's unreal. The, the yeah. documentary is one of the most fantastic documentaries I've ever seen. It's I agree. I agree. Amazing. I agree. So, and that's what, and that's what I'm getting at. And people, and Baps, of course, someone said, Baps, how can we forget that he directed Baps? Who hasn't seen that a million times? 
But I bring up the documentary because the way that your father worked and the way that he put that together and how skilled he is and that determination and tenacity, you have it. Thank you. Thank you. you. And I'm not just saying that because I've seen your, your grind on, you know, and you're very candid on your Instagram. And I remember you, you used to be, and I know you paused for a minute at posting, but you were Mm -hmm. very transparent Mm -hmm. with, um, self-esteem and worthiness and you know and self-doubt why were you so open with these things because they look at this beautiful face and they say oh I forgot to tell you I'm a life coach (laughs) I'm 20 years I'm 20 years I'm sorry I'm sorry but these are the kind of interviews that I like because it's the realness because what you do honestly is the title and it's great and it's fantastic but you are a a woman first you know Yeah, And and I think that that's so important for them to see you like that. But why were you so bold and courageous enough to show your good days and bad days in a time where people just show the good? You know, I, I literally felt a block when I was behaving inauthentically online. Like I knew when I would post something and I'm like, this isn't speaking to me or this isn't real. Like, yeah, I need to show people that It's not just, you know, not just the visual of what it looks like when you get to the top of the mountain, but what it looks like when you're climbing and what it looks like when you fall. And and honestly, I think there's a misconception that comedians are always happy or we're the happiest people. If anything, there's such an understanding for depression, for sadness, that we commit our lives to then spreading joy because we know what it feels like to go through things. And so for me, you know, it's really important to show there's sometimes that you're insecure. There's sometimes, you know, when I took the break, I was shooting the show and I was getting me right. I was in therapy. I was a little heartbroken. Like I had to do the work and I didn't really have anything to say. And so when I did come back, I was very honest about the fact that sometimes you need to take silence to get you right. And, and that's mm. okay. You know, you, you get better. Mm. And I'm, and it's so courageous because you already know the bias. If you're a pretty girl, your father is Robert Towns, and they're like, well, what do you have to complain about? Everybody right. wants to be you. And yeah. that's why I think it was even more dope that you did that to show, you know what? I'm yeah. a regular person at the end of the day. My father yeah. is my father. I don't call him Robert Towns. Right. You know? <laughs> you right. Know? And, <laughs> and I go through these things. Let yeah. me tell do you believe in manifestation? Absolutely. Let me tell you something, and I kid you not. Yeah. My daughter and I were speaking about you this weekend about being on that show and how you deserve that. Wow. I swear to you. We were in the mall. We were walking. I'm in Maryland. We were walking around the mall, and we were talking about my mom. And my daughter said, did you know that Sky Thompson, Townsend is going to be in um, a, a, the Black Lady Sketch And I was like, yeah, I saw that. And we were talking about how much you deserved it. I swear wow. to you. Thank you. And then they tell me today, you're interviewing Sky. Do you want to interview Sky Townsend? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I believe in all of yeah. that. I think, you know, it's, it's yeah. funny, too, because when I speak about manifestation, I've been doing it my whole life because of my mm. dad, but I didn't know the title for it. In my household, it was speak your dreams to God or speak your mm. dreams to the universe. So when oh, wow. we would be younger... I was like nine years old and he's like, if you want it, speak it to the universe. Wow. And I didn't understand that my entire life I was speaking and then executing the things that I wanted. So once I knew the title for it, I'm like, oh, I was raised, I was, I've been doing this since I was little because I was encouraged to speak it out loud. But then I think manifestation is speaking it plus action. You know, it's like, it's not just saying what you, what you want. It's then putting in the work to get it. But my entire life I've been encouraged to manifest not knowing what it was. Wow, how amazing is that to grow up in that kind of way? Because I think it's so powerful. And I always say with my children, the best gift I've given them was the freedom to be them and the freedom to have their own opinions. Yeah, to fly. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and it's so important for for our children to to be their own person. But let me tell you, I saw the video of you and your dad. (laughs) And I was like, I commented it was the sweetest thing ever to see the proudness on yeah. his face because yeah. his child has succeeded. And he talked about when you guys were in the car, when you yeah. were little, you want to talk a little bit about that? I thought that was so, so precious. 
Oh my gosh. You know, it's so funny because um, I always say that he was training me without me knowing because mm -hmm. I thought we were just playing games. You know, I'm like, oh, we're heading to school. And, you know, for example, he'd be like, okay, uh, today we want to see if you can get 10 characters. You think you can get 10 characters? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. So he'd go, all right, caller, we have uh, Bobby from Texas. And I'd be like, hi, can you hear me? It's Bobby. And he'd be like, oh, wait, Bobby, I'm sorry. I think Melanie from London's on the line. And I'd switch, to, you know, from Melanie to London. And I'd be like, can you hear me? <laughs> and we'd go from character to character and feeling like it was a game, but in reality, strengthening my comedic muscles as a child. Yeah. So I was, I remember, you know, I watched um, a film called The Bad Seed that I believe is from the 50s. And mm -hmm. from that, as a little girl, I learned how to do an accent, like a transatlantic accent where, you yeah. know, they speak like this and, you know, it sounds like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. And so it's like I was studying unknowingly and wow. he prepared me exactly for the position that I'm in now. And, you know, be, doing it on a platform like HBO, it really is just mind blowing that yeah. all of the training was, you know, it was, it wasn't me going to an acting school. I can't say that I have the normal experience, but yeah. I still was prepared for this given moment. Girl, let me, let me just, for those that don't know, a black lady sketch show, yes. they're on season two and that's where you'll find Sky. Season yes. one, if you haven't seen it, you got to go back and see it. And I was so proud of those ladies over there, Issa Rae, heading that, and Robin Thede, and everyone. So I just want to read just so so you know. And even Lacey Mosley. I, I, was, crazy. I was like, wow, because <laughs> I listened to her podcast. I was like, what? She's oh, crazy. She's great. Women. Yes. <laughs> so we have Sky. We have Robin Thede, Gabrielle Dennis, Ashley Nicole Black, Lacey Mosley. And you have so many amazing, uh, an executive produced by Issa Rae, Issa but there's yeah. so many amazing people who are coming through this season. Gabrielle Union, Jesse Williams, Miguel, Sky Jackson, Laz Alonzo, Marion, Kim Winans, um, Kim Wayans, excuse me, um, and I Aisha Curry. And I'm just like, wow, the trailer alone. So how does it feel to be amongst all of those amazing Black ladies? Because you're one it's of them. It's so much fun. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. And it's also, you know, I think what's so amazing about the show is it represents such a, a, a wide variety of what it looks like to be a Black woman, right? Because yeah. in Hollywood, it tends to be the stereotype or it looks like this or it looks like that. I mean, we have the women who know about politics, the witty ones, the aunties, the sassy ones, the crazy ones, the nerdy, the quirky. I mean, we cover every single base. And so I love it because you know, on the show, it's just enough to be a black woman. They don't tell us how we're supposed to talk or yeah. how we look when we're upset. They go, mm. some black women, women look like this and some look like that. So I really feel like, you know, we're, we're punching through the ceiling and, and just doing our own thing. It's beautiful. You are just by saying that. And that's so interesting. And a lot of people may not even know what happens behind the scenes or what happens uh, when you go film or tape something and they tell you how to be. You know, I don't want to refer, keep referring back to, to your father, but it's so poignant here because in Hollywood Shuffle, that's what he did. He did the stereotypes of the black men and how they want you to act. And you just touched on that now, like how they think, well, all black women look like this or act like that. And I love the fact that you brought yeah. that up because you're right on this show. It shows all of us across the board in a hilariously yeah. honest way. And I love it. Like, it makes yes. me giggle. You yes. know, some things just, you know, you're looking yeah. at and you smile, but some things make you giggle out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and you recognize them. You go, oh, my cousin acts like that. You know, right. it's great. Right. It's the yeah. foolery, but it's not foolish, if you will. It's like, yes. you know, the, yeah. the, the step, for, you take the steps further. And I'm like, I got a tear yes. out my eye now thinking about some of, some of the scenes and some of your scenes. So you talked Thank about, you. um, you're welcome, doing the, the voices with your dad and not knowing that that was training. Tell the people how many characters, okay, <laughs> you have on this HBO show. How many that you develop yourself? 
Yeah. Um, season two, I played 25 people. And it's... Wow. I mean, it's hard enough playing one character, but, you know, mind you, we're playing a character for 24 hours, and then you fully shed them. You wake up the next day, and it might be a drastic change, you know? Like, if you've seen the show um, in the first episode, you know, I talk with, like, a sideways mouth, and I'm really crazy. <laughs> but then, you know, in the sketch right before that, I, you know, I'm more like this, and, uh, you know, it's scary. <laughs> so you have to remember who does what and who moves like what. And so right. it's, it's a lot to do 25 different people. You just, you gotta stay on your toes at all, all, all times. How do, and I, and I can only imagine, how do you, like, how are you able to, cause that's talent. Like, how do you, how are you able to switch and remember what accent and then the, 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 the infinite detail that you have on this one, like, and then switch like that. How are you able to, to keep track? Because I think it's genius. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I think, you know, well, one, we shut down right before um, the, because of the pandemic, we were a mm -hmm. few days out from filming and then we had an eight month hiatus. So I could have been, you know, chilling at home doing whatever, but I looked at it like, okay, I have eight more months to study these characters and know who they are, know their backstory, you know? And for me, I try to ground every character, right? Like I, I pulled inspiration from almost everybody in my family and three ex-boyfriends on the show. <laughs> what you know <laughs> you know you gotta pull from the people you know and it can be the smallest things i think when you think character work you assume it's the big personalities but yeah. you know my mom for instance is is more quiet but she has subtle quirks that i study mm. you know like when she's on the phone she doesn't speak much she just says mm -hmm. so she'll be like and when i looked at that i was like oh, that's a character. And so you pull these little quirks and develop people out wow. of them, you know, and, and down to assigning your body to roles. Somebody who's secure with themselves will sit different from somebody who's insecure. You mm -hmm. know, somebody who's skeptical will look different from somebody who is nosy. You know, it's like when you really yeah. start to pick what the character's doing and, and what the assignment is, it becomes more simple than it seems, you know. But it's hard so, work, but, you know. Is it safe to say that you are a people watcher? You are a, an observer, observer, observer? I can't help it. Yeah, I can't help it. <laughs> I will be out and I'll be like, oh my gosh. Or, you know, when I would date guys, I'd be like, when he lies, he does this weird thing with his fingers. I'm going to take that. <laughs> so, even the, the voices, I always joke and say, every guy I've ever dated, I've stolen a voice from. Because you're not going to waste my time. I'm going to get some art out of this. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. You know what? As a matter of fact, I think that's why you're here. And now it's time to go. But that's why you're here, so I can get some more more of all that craziness that you're doing. Stealing, so, always stealing. Right. <laughs> right. So I want to ask you, as this is um, an IG show, IG Live, I want to ask you, how did Instagram prepare you for a Black Lady sketch show? Because you were doing a lot of characters um, yeah. early on on Instagram before a lot of the people started using Instagram as a vehicle, you know, for sketches and characters. You were doing it early on. I'm going to say it. Sky yeah. was one of the first ones that I've seen do it <laughs> on Instagram. I'm for real. You know it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, it was yeah, it was cool because I've honestly, you know, I'm I'm above all a businesswoman, right? So I try mm -hmm. to always think in strategy and make sure that like everything I'm learning a lesson from everything that I post. So if anything for me, social media was testing if my sense of humor made sense to people you know so I would post a character that was outlandish you know with pasty makeup and a choppy wig like this and just see do they understand why this is funny um are they receiving me the way that I want so that when I develop my own characters I know what people can receive and so it's it's really interesting if you scroll at the bottom of my page I'm in character for years so yes. like, this show you know was a perfect fit because I've been doing this my whole life so it's it's amazing. I just have to pause to read some of the comments because they are giving you so much love. <laughs> she is the bomb. I love her. She was doing it on YouTube before IG was a thing. Yes, she was. She's a trailblazer. <laughs> Boss babe stands up. Let's see oh, everything. Thank you. Yes, I love Sky story time. Yeah, that's funny. It's funny. <laughs> Like so much love. How does that yeah. feel that you're doing what you love and people are receiving it in an amazing way? Wow. You know, it's my biggest fear with, with being a Townsend, right? Because I'm honored mm -hmm. 
to have the last name, but I understood that, you know, and I know a lot of people whose famous parents have put them in positions that they were not prepared for. And mm -hmm. my biggest fear was to get the credit stripped for me because of my last name versus mm -hmm. people saying, oh, she's gifted as well. And the most beautiful thing has been not a single person out of thousands and thousands have said that. They've all said, nah, 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 maybe other girls, but this one earned it. Or, ah, Shane yeah. Townsend, that makes yeah. sense. And yeah. for me, the most you know, beautiful thing has been people saying, she's a Townsend, that makes sense. Instead of, she's a Townsend, that's how she got the job. And wow. for me, it's, it's, it's really powerful because I love legacy. I love being second generation and I honor that. But in the same, I want to, you know, have my own career and people respect me for my gifts. So I can't even express what it feels like. You know, I, I yeah. see people giving me props and it's one of the most fantastic feelings to know you worked hard and that strangers, you work so hard, strangers can see. Yeah, we definitely can. And you said yeah. so much there and I just want to back up a bit because yeah. people that feel like you are, you're you're doing it, I, I believe, the right way, in just my opinion. And I'll tell you what I mean. So you're saying that you don't want to be just known as Robert Townsend's daughter. Get it, got it. You should be on your own merit. But you're not yeah. saying, I want to pretend that my name is not Townsend. You're saying right, I'm, not I'm acknowledging. <laughs> right, because some people do it that way. I don't want anyone to know who I am and I want right. to make it on my own. But you're still making it on your own with that name and i love that and i love that i'm interviewing you yes we're mentioning your dad but this is really about you and how gifted you are Thank um you. i interviewed coco uh ivy coco who is Cheryl Lee ralph's daughter yes i interviewed her do you know her it's my i've known her since we were baby Yay oh her. yeah okay so um I interviewed her and, it, and I, in the same way, it's almost uh, reminding me of talking to you because we can talk about her mom for a bit because, you know, everyone's like, well, why didn't you say so to yeah. get that out of the way? But yeah. then we're trying to be straight. And then Cheryl Lee well Ralph gets in the camera and we start talking. <laughs> <laughs> but She's I a hysterical it. personality. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> but I love the fact that she still did the same thing you did. Like, yes, yeah. that is, that's my mom. I'm not going to act like it's not my mom. I'm not going to act like she's a legend, not a legend. But at the same time, yeah. I'm still me and I'm making it on my own. Yeah. And, and, and you saying that, you know, everyone's like, you're a dope actress, extremely <laughs> talented, love Sky. Thank you. Amen. They're loving you. Thank so you. with your, and I, I want to switch gears for a moment and talk mm -hmm. about your photography. Yes. Because you're an amazing photographer and the people that love you or follow you or know you know that. When yeah. did you start photography? Well, you know, it's funny. I, um, I, I used photography as a side hustle when, when I wasn't making any money because mm -hmm. I wanted to still have full time to audition. But in the same, my parents were like, you're grown. We, we are not money trees. Um, despite what people may think, I love that. once I decided to move out, I had to pay for my own bills. So I had a lot of debt. I had credit card bills. I had days where I'm like, oh, is it this bill or this bill? And so photography, I started shooting headshots for other actors when mm. my when my work was Smart. going slow. And you know, and for me it really it humbles you because at that point I'm working for those people. You know, like despite them following me or however they look for me and look at me or whatever they may think, I'm working to give them a product they like and it keeps yeah. you on your toes and it keeps you humble. And I was doing it right up until I booked the HBO show. So wow. it's really powerful because, you know, that was the only way I was eating. And then the pandemic hit and I booked the show, thank God, I don't know how I would have paid my bills. So it's yeah. like, you know, you just have to have so many hustles and yeah. understand that, um, you know, you, you got to be able to get creative. If you want to live this life and you don't want a nine to five or whatever, then have yeah. some skills, you know, and, and be able, that's some advice that I can give. Be able to be your own team, you know, like yeah. even Come on when doing interviews, like I have to Come know on. how to do a ponytail, do my makeup. I Come have on. to know how to do these things because yeah. if somebody bails on you, you always must Come be on. prepared. Always. And honey, and honey, that makeup it looks good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it looks good. But I think that that's so important. You said so many things. But first, I just want to touch on what you said. You have to learn so many skills and you have to learn how to do your hair and makeup. People were falling apart during this pandemic. One eyelash was hanging off. 
edges were up, the this was this. I'm like, you guys can't do your own hair or do some type of makeup. You can't do your own nails. And that's when you started to see that everybody doesn't have that. Yeah. And you knew that, you know what, I'm going to have to be a one woman show and I'm going to have to figure this thing out. And my yeah. pride will not allow me to stop eating. I'm yeah. going to work for these people and do what I have to do. And yeah. I think everything was aligned because yeah. when God is ready to bless you with what's, what's yours, yeah. he has to see that you've been working, that you've been, pro that you have pushed that pride aside and yeah. that you really are working towards what you want. And you said, you yeah. know what? I don't want to get a nine to five. Let me figure yeah. it out because when that opportunity knocks, I want to be available to go to that audition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I love your people. They're like, yep, she's a painter. She's a singer. Come on, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. Absolutely. She's an all around talent. So are you self taught as a painter and a singer? Because you're you're great at both. You're great at a lot of the things that you put Thank your you. hands on. Yeah, you know, it's funny because one of my friends was talking to me and she said, you're just good at everything. And I said, I'm going to stop you right there. I said, mm. you're seeing after I've learned the craft. You're not seeing that I would spend hours and hours watching or messed up or when I was painting, there were kids messing up. You're That's only good. seeing once I've mastered a skill that I've That's started good. when I was 13. Now, at the end of the day, it's never too late to learn something new. And I think we start to tell ourselves, you just can't, I, I'm not good at that. But if yeah. you want it bad enough, you are able to learn yeah. new skills as an adult, you know? And so um, for me, yeah, it's, I've always just tried to, to observe and, and study greats in whatever field and learn something from it, whether it's hair, makeup, uh, comedy, photography. But I, you know, my parents told me, if you want something, pay for it. I did yeah. not have the extra money to pay for lessons. And yeah, wow. they could have just kept on putting it in my pocket, but I was a grown woman. So it was like, okay, YouTube is my teacher. Um, let me go watch my friends who are great at what they do. What are they doing? And so, yeah, I would say self-taught, but really just observing people who are more gifted than me. You know, I never want to be the smartest or the most talented person in the room. Never. I want to learn. So, um, so for me, yeah, it's YouTube and Google have taught me more than I can. <laughs> it's like... They but you know teachers. what? Let me tell you, you know what? It doesn't even matter who your parents are if anyone knows them. You were raised right. You really were. You were raised with great values and great morals and that that what it you can't see a lot of people and a lot of and I love millennials. I love young people. I talk to them all the time. But yeah. so many people are used to being handed things mm -hmm. and they don't have to work for them. They don't know how value a dollar is and and but you know and I love the fact that even though your father's famous your mom is you know beautiful and, and a great mom that they didn't say you know what let me damage Sky and just give her everything she wants because that's very damaging and you yeah. wouldn't be able I don't believe that you would appreciate everything that you worked so hard for if it was just handed to you at all, you know, and eventually you have to allow your kids to, to blossom and figure it out. Like my parents are still classic black parents, figure yeah. it out, you know? <laughs> figure it out. I remember I, you know, yeah. I'm straight up out of a breakup. I had no money saved. I was thousands and thousands in debt. And my mom said, and you will figure it out. And yeah. so it's like, you start to just really value your time, your money and other people's time and money when you are in that position. And so, yeah. you know, I mean, I wouldn't have asked to be raised any other way. I. I am grateful for the things that I've experienced due to him being in the industry, but I'm also incredibly grateful for the normalcy because yeah. I had chores. I didn't get allowance. I yeah. only got money on birthdays or Christmas, if that, and I had to make sure the kitchen was clean or I was grounded for two months. My mom did not play. So it was like, it really raised me to respect people's time. And you know, even something I learned in this industry, um, show up early and that means you're on time. Show mm -hmm. up on time, that means you're late. you're late. And if you're late, that means you're disrespectful. Come so on, So I'm going to be the first one to set because I need you to understand that I don't disrespect you and that I value your time. And, you know, and that says a lot about your, your professionalism is when you show up and how you show up, you know? Wow. How you show up to the room. Yeah. It's so important. And a lot of people don't even realize, and you get that early. And that's yeah. so powerful. That's a lesson that's going to carry you through the rest of your life.
Yeah. And my grandfather used to say that if you're on time, you're late. <laughs> Period. You should she always have five that. minutes to spare yep. and kick your feet up and be like, I made it. You know, yep. I would go you want to get there early. before you want to get there before the head honchos and the big <laughs> bosses, because you want to get there and be like, what, what took y'all? You just want to have that kind of vibe. Like, yeah. what took y'all so long? I'm here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 100%. <laughs> it's so important. So I, I want to talk about you. You mentioned it a couple of times, and I don't want to go too much into it, mm -hmm. but you were very visible with your, your last relationship, right? Mm -hmm. You posted mm -hmm. your last relationship a lot. Um, mm -hmm. People knew who, who he was and, mm -hmm. you know, you all were in a relationship online. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. not on, just online, but you, you yeah. displayed it online. And yeah. then you mm -hmm. had the breakup. We don't need yeah. to know why. That's your business. Yeah. But you had the breakup. And it kind of broke you a bit. Mm -hmm. You want to talk yeah. a little bit about that? Because there's someone out there right now feeling like they can't look as beautiful as you are now, get an HBO show or achieve their goals because they're still in that, that hurting place because of the yeah. breakup. You want yeah. to talk about that a, a bit and Absolutely. inspire someone? You know, I think, well, well, one, I was in a relationship for seven years. It was unbelievable. He set the bar so high that I'm just like, Thank you. You know, from how I was treated, how I was respected, everything. Um, but, you know, it's really interesting. I, I was in a space where, you know, of course, there's multiple things that lead to you taking space. But I think as you get older, you start to realize what you need to work on. Right. Mm -hmm. And for me specifically, um, I was in a space where no matter how much validation I was given, there was something that I just wasn't liking mm -hmm. about me. And it was really difficult being in a public relationship because people were incredibly harsh. Um, they would tell him, you know, you need somebody cuter or this or that, or everybody had their opinions. But I was in a space where I don't think I had enough life experience yeah. to jump to the next step. And, yeah. um, and I really needed some time to get to know myself, you know? And it was really deep because when we broke up, it was he was ready for the whole world to tackle the whole world and let's get married and whatever. And there was something in me where I'm like, God, I still have so much work to do. Ugh, I just, I can't jump into this yet, you know? And I'm not gonna treat you a thousand percent right until I get me right, you know? Yeah. And um, I never wanted to, you know, it's something I speak about a lot because I was in a young relationship and I was considering marriage, but I didn't have enough years to understand what I really had. And I didn't have enough experience to, to maintain that for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. I think I didn't know enough about myself. I didn't yeah. have enough. Um, he was my safety blanket for everything. I yeah. didn't have to worry about anything. If I was yeah. short on rent, he was there. If I was sad, he gave me a hug. If yeah. you know, I didn't book a job, he had the money. If I needed anything, he was there. So I wasn't really growing because I was in so much love that that's all that mattered, you know? Yeah. And so it's deep because you know we broke up and we're still in love you know and it was like god we had an amazing time but we got to figure some stuff out you know but the average girl probably would have gone and got married and messed up something because she was rushing but for me i knew that i was with an amazing person but i had so much work to do that i wasn't being honest about and yeah. that i knew that i would eventually force him in a position of being really unhappy with me you know and so wow. um after the breakup it was it was tough because people made their assumptions about why it happened and, and he's an amazing person still is but you know it's, it's powerful to be honest and look in the mirror and be like wait uh, it doesn't matter how much you say you love me i'm not loving me correctly Ooh. i can't give you what you need right now you know yeah and and where i'm at right now required so much discipline and so much solitude that I could not be in a relationship right now. It's not even a matter of being single or free yeah. or freaky or experimental. No, yeah. it's a yeah. matter of I have to be so focused right now yeah. that I don't have room to love somebody else. They'd be getting my scraps. Yeah. And Ooh. I think he deserves more than my scraps. You know, yeah. I think anybody who dates me deserves more than my scraps. And, you know, I'm honored to, to have experienced something where a man wanted to marry me and do right. But yeah. um, I believe timing is everything. And I didn't want to rush into anything that I wasn't mature enough for. And so, um, so yeah, it, it was very difficult for me, though, to watch people's opinions. Like, I knew he wasn't in love with her. I did it. And I'm like, you know, but everyone's Because people think they know everything. People think yeah. that they and know so everything me, because yeah, you show them a I, I went into therapy. 
Um, I did the digging. I, I realized that I was holding on to a lot of things that I didn't know. Um, I realized that I was kind of letting myself go without knowing it because he loved me no matter what. So why would I work out? Why would I eat good? Why would I go to work? I have you, you know? Yeah. And that's great. But at the end of the day, I've become such a woman by having to start over, by having to do it on my own. And, you know, God willing, whatever's meant to be will be. But I think um, it's really difficult to, to trust that voice within when it's a difficult decision, you know? Yeah. I'm just yeah. so proud of you. I'm listening to you and I'm looking at you like you're my daughter. Thank because you. that you're welcome because that takes so much maturity and it takes so much honesty and really yeah. looking inward and saying, you know what? I'm not whole yet. I got to figure out what's going on with me on the inside. And I don't yeah. want to bring someone else into this and give them scraps and not give them the best of yeah. who I am because I don't I bring enough have some healing. Yeah, I don't bring you, enough yet, you know, but and he you was know willing how to pick up the scraps, but I'm like, I'm not bringing enough to the table and you're giving everything. This is, this is 80, 20 right now, despite me loving at my fullest capacity. I, I wasn't even in a place where my career was starting to take off. I'm like, this is not the move for me yet, you know? And so it's, mm. it's powerful when you think about the work you have to do and you look in the mirror and instead of doing this, you do this. It's terrifying because you're like, I thought I loved me, but there's so yep. much I have to work on, you know, yep. there's so much. I'm just, you're inspiring so many young women out there. Everybody is just going, I mean, I can't even read the comments. How fa <laughs> They're coming so fast because I'm, I told you, I'm a life coach and I coach yeah. clients who are in their forties and fifties and thirties, and they still don't have that lesson that you yeah. gain in your 20s. Do you know how powerful that is? Do you know when you get to 30 and 40, do you yeah. know how amazing that is? And I'm not yeah. just telling you that. I'm, you. I have a client right now, a couple of them in their 40s that are just beginning to learn that right now. Yeah. And it's so important, everyone out there, it's not weak to ask for help. Les Brown yeah. says you ask for help because you want to remain strong. And you're, yeah. you, and, and, I, and it's so important to get the help you need, whether it's a counselor, a therapist, a life coach, you have mm -hmm. to look inward. So if certain mm -hmm. things keep happening in your life or you're trying to figure it out mm -hmm. or you're unsure or your piece is a little wonky or you're trying to figure out, that's mm -hmm. when you know that it's you and you have to search inside to see what it yeah. is. But that's so yeah. big of you to say, you yeah. know what, the love of your life you know, at yeah. that, from that, all of those years to be so young to say, you know what, yeah. I need to work on me. I can't give you anything else because I have to give it to myself first. And yes. I'm not ready right now because so yeah. many young women want to jump into a marriage just to say that they're yeah. married and to plan the wedding and post the pictures and not really do the self work. Kudos to you yeah. for that, Sky. Thank you. Yeah. So and I serious. think, you know, it's, it's terrifying because, you know, when we when we broke up, we were living together. We had a dog together. Our worlds were combined. Our every friend knew every friend. Every yeah. parent was close. But for me, I I didn't think that I had the strength or the independence to start over at 25. I was like, all of my friends feel ahead of me right now. Even if they just, I felt like I didn't have somewhere to live, a job, a car, income. I felt like I just had debt. That's all I felt like I had. Yeah. You know? And so to look now at where I am. I, I do this every morning when before I didn't grant you. myself any grace, you know, because I started over at 25 with wow. literally nothing but debt and a few clothes. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I started wow. over. I didn't have furniture. I didn't. I literally started from scratch and was back on my mom's couch and was back, you know, in acting class and just hoping that I could put it on my credit card. And it wasn't until I did the work and looked inward that I started to receive blessings and that, mm. you know, I didn't question my decision. I was mm. lonely. I was sad, but I knew oh, now you're becoming a woman. Like I stepped mm. into womanhood in a different way where Woo! I said, oh, I went from thousands and thousands of debt Woo! to billboards and they, they think I'm, <laughs> Come on! you know what I'm saying? They think yes! I'm from this, this wealth and this being spoiled. Yes! I'm like, yes! I rebuilt myself in a year, yes! you know? And, wow. and even getting myself back right. Whenever I had to cry, wow. I would go down to the gym in the building and I would cry on the treadmill. I'm like, if you're going to wow. cry, get yourself in shape while you do it. <laughs> so <laughs> you know absolutely. absolutely after you you have that period i tell women all the time okay you have that period where yeah. you want to grieve the relationship you want to mourn you want to kick and scream yeah look yeah. in the mirror but you got to get up 
Yeah. You got to get up because you are worth it. And if you haven't learned a lesson yeah. in that, then you're going to yeah. keep repeating it. So you got to take yeah. a moment. And you yeah. didn't jump into another relationship. You no. didn't try to soothe in other yeah. ways. You went yeah. inward. And I just yeah. want to stress. I went to therapy. <laughs> yes. But that's good. That's good. It's good because look at you now. You had to yeah. do the work so you could be on HBO. You had to get rid of all of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. Be, people are like, you're so inspiring. You know, I truly admire you. Oh, she's brilliant, you. inspiring. My daughter is like, wow, she's in there. <laughs> of course she is. Lovely 93. That's her. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Man. Yeah. Wow. It, it's awesome, too, because I've never really, you know, spoken about it to this degree. But yeah. it's like it's it's um, being able to to reflect inward and then put it towards your craft and be like, yeah. OK, now I have work to do. Um, you, you start to realize all the things that you were that you didn't know you were. Like, I had no mm. idea I was lazy for a very long time. Mm. I thought because I showed up and did enough of the work that I was doing all of the work. But I was very lazy and did not, and did not know it. I was not going the extra mile in all aspects of my life. I did bare minimum and I was very good at it. So it looked shinier than it was. You know, like, so everyone mm. goes, oh, you're good at that. I'm like, oh, I didn't even give my all. They have no idea. I didn't even give my all. And it wasn't until I'm in my fourth month sleeping on my mom's couch, like, I got to start giving my all for real. Like, I'm doing enough, wow. and my enough is better than the average person's regular, so I'm getting Ooh. by. But I'm being really lazy. Oh, you let me say, I'm getting ready to put my daughter out there. My daughter is very accomplished. I don't even want to make her seem like a scrub. You know, she's, she's in school. She works for a law firm. She's doing her thing. But that's my daughter. What you just, you know, she's in here. I'm sorry, Aaliyah. We're going to keep it all the way real. That's her. Yeah. That's yeah. her because to me, you know, and I'm not one of those parents that I'm going to make my child do this and make my child do that. Just like you, you have to find it as a young woman yourself. Yeah. And yeah. she's beginning to find, she's going through that same thing right yeah. now. So, and yeah. I'm sure if you've gone through it, if my daughter has gone through it, all of these yeah. young women on here are going through it right now, yeah. or they will be going through that. And you are mm -hmm. speaking directly to them. Yeah. What an impact you're making. Thank so I got to ask you, I got to ask you a funny question. So when you go to the stores and you see him on the big billboard, what's going <laughs> through your head? <laughs> what's going through his head when he sees my billboard? No, 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 no when I see no. him. No, you're right. Let's pause. Let's just pause on that. No. Because I didn't think he's on um, Hollywood Boulevard or Wilshire or wherever your billboard is. He might not be there. Yeah. You know, when I see it, honestly, yes. when we started out, we both had nothing. You know, we both wow. had, like, we were starting from scratch. And I look at him and I go, wow, you really did it. And you're still doing it, you know, with or without me. You're, I, I'm so excited for his success because I know yeah. here is solid. You know, here is, yeah. is warm. And so I wish him the best. Every guy that I've ever dated has had a solid spirit, except for like two. But um, they had a solid spirit. <laughs> There's always that, two. You know, yeah, I'm proud. I look and I'm like, dang, like, <laughs> nice, you know? Yeah. It reminds me of the movie Disappear Disappearing Acts with Sanaa Lathan and Wesley Snipes when, when, sh when they say, we had to be apart to get our ish together. Like we had to go be apart and now you're blowing up over here. I'm blowing up over here. And then Life. maybe, you know, if it's meant to be, maybe, you know, you'll cross paths again in that way. If not, then there's going to be a pretty lucky going. man out there for it. There's yeah. going to be a pretty lucky man that's like, I hope she don't get back with him. I hope she don't get back with him. <laughs> <laughs> wherever it goes you just go with it you know and that's the thing yeah. is like, in life you can't over plan anything and yeah. you know you can't dwell on anything either you accept the decisions you've made you move forward and you know like I said I, I've never really been able to do this to myself I always was very difficult um it was difficult for me to to grant myself any grace or compassion but lately I'm like wow you were sleeping on your mom's couch with nothing but debt and look wow. at you, like you really did it. You did it, you know? You did it. She yeah. did it. <laughs> but you're so radiant right now. I mean, it's glowing. The happiness, you can tell. I can tell the difference when someone is happy on the surface and when it's mm -hmm. radiating from the inside out. And that's what mm -hmm. I see when I look at you. I don't see a fake happy. I, I can't see fake a it. peaceful <laughs> place. Right? <laughs> I'd be like this. Yeah, I'm great. <laughs> 
<laughs> you seem so happy. So all of this growth and all of this learning, is this why you uh, created the podcast? I want to make sure I get the name right. Cause I I, I want to cause I keep saying just unpack and bounce back. Oh, it is unpack yes. and bounce back. I wanted to make sure yes. I was right. Is this yeah. why you started this? Because you're very revealing on the podcast and you're very open. And I appreciate that because honesty helps heal. Those are my three H's that I always say. Honesty helps yeah. heal. And yeah. you're very candid. Thank you. You're very candid. And I love the fact that you're not just showing one side of you. Because you're more than a pretty face, you're more than an actress, you're more than someone's daughter. Like you're a woman trying to go through this journey. So is yeah. this one of the reasons you started this? And Raina, yeah. I don't want to forget Raina. Yes, Raina. Yes, Raina Biddy, my cousin who I do it with. Honestly, we have these really crazy introspective conversations all the time. Mm -hmm. And eventually we're like, she said, somebody needs to hear this. And you know, and, and all the biggest thing about us is when we do unpack the things that we're going through we always end with a laugh. I mean, even, mm -hmm. you know, when, when I got, you know, through the breakup, I called her and I, I was crying, but then I'm like, so I guess I'm homeless. And she's like, girl, <laughs> <laughs> you know, not right now. But you now. need that cousin. You need a cousin like that. I you needed the laugh, sister, you know? cousin, somebody like that. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I think it's important to, um, I don't know, I, I, for me, it's very hard for me to connect to a lot of spiritual platforms because it feels like character work. I feel like a lot of people mm. um, create an identity or a voice, or it sounds like they don't really know what they're talking about. They just say it's a safe space. Um, I just, I couldn't tap into a lot of the things I was hearing. It didn't feel real to me. It didn't feel mm. unfiltered. It felt like somebody was in a studio and they perfectly edited it and they wanted it to sound mm. like um, a guided meditation. And so with right. this, I said, you know, we both have so much to offer, but I think yeah. we could do it in a way where we know each other well enough to respect each other's boundaries at all mm. times. So even on the podcast, if she asks a question I don't want to answer, I go, girl, you better stop. Like, and we were close <laughs> enough, you know, to do right, that. Right. But, um, but yeah, for me, it's like, I've always dreamed of doing radio. So the podcast mm -hmm. fills a really specific place for me growing up loving mm -hmm. radio and people who are great yeah. at their jobs. Um, but in the same, I think. It... You know, a lot of nosy people tuned in for the heartbreak episode just to be like, you know, and I told them, if you're listening to this to hear me bash him, that's not what I'm doing. I'm sharing how I then pick myself up. So you right. know, we discuss rejection. Um, That's right. We like to have a, a tough relationship with siblings. Uh, we discuss, you know, um, divorce. Someone said Black they love the matter, spirituality what? episode. Yes. Yeah. Someone said they yeah. love the spirituality, spirituality uh, episode. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, we always try to say we're still learning. We're not um, therapists. We're not specialists. We're not gurus. We'll never claim yeah. to be that. We're just women who have experienced a lot of life in a small amount of time. And we hope that by yeah. sharing that transparency, transparency, people go, dang, I could do this too. Like, or I didn't think about it yeah. like that. This makes sense. And yeah. to still get a laugh while doing that, it's like, it's yeah. unbeatable, you know? Why do you think so many people want to, to front on social media and pretend that they have it all together when they're really going home at night and they're crying in their beds? Why do you feel that people feel the need to post fakeness? I think because what's scary about social media is you never know who's watching you. Like, I know that girls that don't like me or people who hate me are always watching, right? And I could perform for them and try to look mm -hmm. like I'm the happiest, richest, whatever version of myself. But at the end of the day, um, people are always going to spy, lurk, hate on you, whatever. I think mm -hmm. if you're trying to pretend to be happy, um, it's almost doing you a disservice because people can usually tell you're faking and then it just kind of looks way worse than just not posting at all. <laughs> and so that's why I always say it's like, you don't have to post, you know, you like this when you're really having a breakdown, just be silent. Just don't post. Yeah. It's like yeah. we become a slave to social media to try to update people and look like we have a one up. Like, it's okay yeah. to sit back and be like, I have nothing to say right now. Yeah. But I think everybody wants to... Um, to get to this flex and and I think if that's where you're coming from to, to chase success it's going to be very empty if your success mm. is coming to make your enemies unhappy when you get it it's not going to hit mm. versus doing it you know when I went to the billboard I didn't go to take a picture to be like 
But my haters, I went with my dad to be like, for you, you know? And oh, the success wow. is different, you know? So I, yeah. I think um, it's like, you gotta know why you're chasing success. Is it to flex on people or is it because you love the work? See, then, ooh, you, hello, somebody. He's talking to somebody out there. There's somebody out there like, let me not post this whole weekend. Let me get yeah, myself it's together. Okay. Take a break. <laughs> it's okay. Because you don't have to, and I'm talking to all of you out there, you don't have to perform for someone. You don't have to be who someone expects you to be. If you don't feel like posting, don't. Get yourself together and get all of this right. And then post, and then you can post from an honest place. Because like Sky said, we know that it's fake. We know that it's not the true happy. So take that time to work on that true happy. But I, I love the fact that you went with your dad to take that picture because that's just like me going to a music recital or my daughter, my youngest daughter is yeah. graduating from college tomorrow. So yeah. that's the same type of joy. You know, yes. if your child is in Little League or if they are in their first play, that's that yes. same joy that a yes. parent has. And yes. how does it feel to make both of your parents so proud of you as a young woman? How does that feel that your parents are looking at you like, girl, you did it? I, I, you know, I think my, my mom was always a little bit more worried because I took the non-traditional route. My mom is, you know, she has her master's. She's a therapist. Mm -hmm. She's intelligent. She just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, college and education is everything. And for me, yeah. I was the wild card, you know? Then mind you, I'm mm -hmm. starting over on her couch at 25. She's like, yeah. uh. <laughs> but, you know, I think... I, I always say both of my parents value kindness above anything. And so I think mm. beyond them being proud that I'm on TV and can share, that's cool. But I think they look at how much I enjoy being kind to others and they're like, that's the way. So, so for me, I'm like, you know, I, the older I get, the more I understand legacy. And, you know, it's important for me to educate my generation or the generation below me about my dad. I want you to know mm -hmm. what he did for our mm -hmm. people. And Come on now. Industry Meteor so, man, all of that. Just amazing. Yeah, you know. Yes. Even how he was revolutionizing independent films. I mean, the, the way he approached his career, I want us to scream that at the mountaintops. But yeah. I think my parents being proud makes it all worth it, you know. Yeah. And, and knowing that people can see that the, you know, I'm all over the place. I'm a little strange. I'm, and I'm making a career out of it. So if Come you on. feel a little different, you can <laughs> still on. make your bread. You can still be powerful, even if you're a little strange or if you have bad eye contact or if you have a quirk or. Yep. So um, because you, so yeah, that's that's just how you I use them what people think. Yeah, and it, you know what? And I can see, I can see it on your face. I, I'm I'm just looking at you, and I just see so much joy. I see an amazing woman, you know, coming into her own. And you yeah. said the most poignant thing of of this interview is to be kind. Those yeah. type of things are what go a long way. It doesn't. At yeah. the end of the day, it doesn't matter what field you're in be kind, be honorable, respect people's time, respect yeah. people's space. And all of the quirks that you think, or people said, well, you talk too much, or you do this too much, or you do that too much, use yeah. that and turn it into your career and your profession. When, I, yeah. look, when, I, I, when I'm looking at you, and I'm thinking yeah. about me too, when I was younger, I got A's and B's, and they said, but Kendall speaks excessively. <laughs> yeah. now, that's what I do for a living. That's, so how I get it. <laughs> That's how it works. That's how it works. And I think it's tone. being kind yeah. for the purpose of being kind, not so that people think you're kind. I see that Ooh. a lot in this industry is people are kind, kind and polite for their reputation, not Ooh. because it's the right thing. And I yeah. look and I'm like, you realize we can see that that's fake too. You know, like just be kind. Period. Period. Just be kind, you know? Naturally. That's it. But that, ooh, Pete, you're so right, because people do, and that, again, like, we see you on uh, social media fake, and we can tell when it's a fake kind. You know, we can I, tell when it's from a not-so-pure yeah. place. But yeah. I can truly tell that you're kind, you're thoughtful, yeah. you're considerate. Like the old folks say, you was raised right. <laughs> and I'm just so proud that they asked me to, to sit and chat with you for a bit. Thank you. I'm so excited. This has been you're so welcome. fun. This Yay! has been so much fun. 
Yes, likewise. I feel the same and I'm just so proud. And you know, you have a supporter. But with me and my daughters and all of these people on here, you're never gonna lose. People are gonna support everything you do. They're like, don't forget she's a painter, don't forget she's a singer. <laughs> I know they just want to make sure, you know, and that Thank kind you. of love that's genuine. You're welcome. And yeah. that's because of what you're putting out there. And they can yeah. see that it's authentic. So Baby girl, just keep shining and keep doing your work. You are doing amazingly well. Everyone, a, a Black Lady sketch show is on HBO season two. You can find Sky in six episodes. Yes, all episodes. Yep, but, every episode. But what? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. All six, and it is six. So you can find her on every episode. Do you want to just leave them quickly? Leave the women on here with just a little inspiration, the ones that are still trying to find themselves yeah. or discover who they are? Um, wow. I think so, of course, how we discussed, if you have nothing to say, you don't really need to post. Um, but I think in the same, you know, it's okay to isolate for a bit, right? I think most of my growth came from solitude and having to sit with my thoughts because it's easy to stay distracted and then you don't really have to do the work because it's like well i'm gonna go to happy hour or be with my friend or yeah. come over come over come yeah. over when it was silent and i lived alone which i do now i had to face myself every single day and i think yeah if you're always running or you're always trying to stay distracted you're never going to get to the best version of yourself you know and i'm not even at the best version of myself i feel like mm -hmm. i'm finally breaking you know through this negative period that I was in. But yeah. I think it's like, sometimes you gotta sit and be still. And sometimes mm -hmm. if you really are having a hard time coming to the realization of what you need to work on, ask somebody you love and say, look, this is gonna be hard for me. What is something that I can work on? And if you're ready cool. for that answer, you'll start to do the work, you know? And, and you will kinda, you'll get something you might not be ready for. See? Um, but, we're yeah, running out of, we're running out of time. I don't I don't want it to cut us off. Everyone, this is the amazing Sky Townsend. Make sure you support her and follow her with everything she does. Continue to shine, girl. I'm so glad that I got a chance to sit with you. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much Sky. <laughs> this is Sheen Talk. I'm Kendelanese. God bless everybody.